Here's the next part. It's from John 1. I think it might be one of the most well-read chapters in the Bible because most people, if I took a poll here, when you first got saved, what did they tell you to read first? The Gospel of John. So where did you start? Chapter 1. So this is probably one of the most well-read scriptures ever just on as, as far as the number of times it's been read. And you can still find something new in it. Isn't that amazing? I did this week. I found something new. It says what we probably are all familiar with. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God, and the Word was God. So who's the Word in that scenario? Jesus, and that's a new concept to a lot of people. We think back to Genesis 1, in the beginning, God, and now John is starting the new gospel in the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word, so in the beginning, God. Again, see, John's pointing you back and saying this is the new version of Genesis. Hmm. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And here's what I want to focus on. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Who's that? Jesus came in the midst of the darkness and shined a light just by the way he lived his life. And he's the light of the world. And then he said that we, in the Sermon on the Mount, we are the light of the world. And light belongs in darkness. So we live in a part of the country where there's a lot of darkness, right? I mean, I guess in most parts of the country there is. It's just very in your face around here, especially if you cross the Hudson River and get into New York City. It's really in your face. Well, but we should be intimidated by that. The light in us is brighter than the darkness. God's power strips away the sin. That fire comes up on the inside, acts like a furnace, and whatever film of dirt is on there, it just melts off because it can't stand the heat. Mm. That's how I want to live. In him was life, and the light was the life of, uh, sorry, the life was the light of men. And this was the hard part for me that I picked up something this week. It says, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That's the New King James Version, which is what I tend to read as kind of my standard. The light did not comprehend, I'm sorry, the darkness did not comprehend it. You know, when you think comprehend, it's more like me trying to understand quantum physics. Didn't comprehend it, couldn't understand it. And it's really, the word, it's, there's so much more to this word than that. It's not that the light just couldn't understand it. Because you know a lot of people that aren't Christians right now, you present the gospel, and they're like, I'm, sure, I'm glad it works for you, but I don't get it. True? You run into that? Well, you have to ask the Lord for a new strategy. What's the key to that person's heart? What do they need to hear that will open up their eyes? So look at the next one. It's, I, I went and looked at other versions and how this word gets interpreted. Comprehend is only one version, but there's many others. What came, this was from the Message Bible. It says, what came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. Isn't that good? I can go to Jesus every day and let him be my light that day. The life light blazed out of the darkness. Look at this. The darkness couldn't put it out. That's a whole lot different than could not comprehend it. That turns it into a fight now. Now it's a fight between light and darkness, and the darkness loses. Look at all these other ones. Darkness could not overcome it in the NIV. Darkness can never extinguish it in the New Living Translation. And then there's others that say could not comprehend it. But then, I like that one, darkness never put it out. Apprehended it not, right? The darkness is trying to chase down this light but can't catch it. That's Jesus. Has not overpowered it. And then I just came up with the street version. Couldn't crack the code. The darkness cannot crack the code of Jesus. He's way higher. And then we'll never devise a strategy to defeat it. The devil will never devise a strategy to defeat it. God is greater. His power strips sin. It strips sin if you submit yourself to it. Now, that's, that's the process. Submitting yourself to it means you've got to say goodbye to some old habits. Those people, remember when Jesus cast out the demoniac, their pigs ran into the lake. They lost their pigs. They weren't happy. They told Jesus to leave. We don't like to lose our pigs sometimes, right? But, man... I got a whole new understanding of this verse. Like now all of a sudden the darkness is not going to defeat the light. There are times when somebody overdoses on drugs and dies, right? And it looks like the darkness won. But if that person had submitted themselves to the lordship of Jesus, had surrendered themselves, had allowed God to strip the sin. And what's the sin there, right? It's an addiction. You're, you've allowed something to control your life. And if you look at your life, if there's something you can't stop, that's a problem. There should be nothing in your, I mean, 
keep reading the word. That's one good thing that you shouldn't be able to stop. But I'm saying like coffee. If you can't stop drinking coffee, that's a problem. You should be able to take a week off of anything you're doing in those regards, watching stuff, playing video games. But if you took some people's phone away for a week, I think they would be in post-traumatic stress. <laughs> I can't believe how many people are playing video games on the subway, on, on their phone. And this thing could be like a, a college education of stuff that's on here if you wanted it. So it's not, this is, isn't bad, it's how people use it, good or bad, right? So let's, let's keep going. I don't want to keep you here all day. I probably could, but I won't. <laughs> so then in Hebrews, this gives us a connection to who it is that is this life light that's blazing in the darkness. And this is the Passion Translation, which I know you know that we quote a lot because we love it. It says, for we have a magnificent king priest, Jesus Christ, son of God, who rose into the heavenly realm for us. And now what? Sympathizes. Do you see it? Oh, I didn't change. I'm sorry. My bad. I'll, I'll catch up with y'all. <laughs> see that yellow one? Now sympathizes with us in our weakness and our frailty. So I think if he's leaning over and holding his hand out to me, he's not calling me a loser. He's not saying, oh, man, I can't believe you're calling me again. <laughs> you need my help again? <laughs> well, would you say that to your child? No. You're like, that's what you want to do. You love your child. You want to help them. You're glad when they ask you a question. As they get older, they stop asking sometimes. And you want them to stay connected with you, right? So he's not looking down at us. It says, we have a magnificent king priest. He rose into the heavenly realm. We were singing about it during worship today ascend the hill of the lord right go higher up that scaffolding that lisa saw and now all of a sudden he sympathizes with us in that frailty he's not putting you down for asking for help he wants to help you he understands humanity for as a man our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are and what did he do louder one more time you should put your foot down when you say that he conquered sin this is the battle that we're all facing. If you could get sin conquered in your life, things would change dramatically. Because these are the things that besetting sin that hold us back. We've got this dual track running in our lives where these addictions are holding us back or whatever that, whatever that besetting sin is. It could be arrogance, it could be pride. I heard somebody call arrogance like a coating of arrogance. And you can picture that on the Pharisees, can't you? And then Paul, He's all, you know, before he got converted, he was called Saul. He's on the road to Damascus to go kill Christians. And all of a sudden, that coating of arrogance, when the light was shining, yeah, it burned it off, didn't it? He couldn't even see. It was so bright, he couldn't even see. And now that coating of arrogance became humility. And now he's blind and has to wait for somebody to come and pray for him until he could see again, yeah. right? So that could be any of us in any area. We could be getting too haughty or too prideful. And it's funny, you could be working well in 99 areas in your life, but if there's one area, he's like, come on, I'll help you higher. Come up a little higher. I'll strip that sin off you. I'll turn up the heat and it'll burn that film off and you'll come up higher. And you know what? You won't go back. You're not gonna wanna go back. Because once you've tasted the real thing, man, you don't want the fake. 